actually, let's get, uh, I gotta get a good Instagram. Uh, it's gonna be done this week, so I should actually bug them. Yeah. We're going camping with them soon. Alrighty. Camera one. Hey, I'm Travis Stone. We're here today talking about uh, a crash clip that I filmed of myself on my uh, first DVD project for the fuck asses BMX DVD. So before we get to uh, you know your beautiful nap in the rain, what was it like doing some self-filming? Because for quite a while you had been doing it, and I know that for most BMX riders it's a little different. Like me personally, I don't self-film at all. I always get somebody there just because of experiences like this where I've seen stuff of you. Um, but yeah, just tell us about some self-filming and maybe some of the other rails that you had done to kind of bring your confidence up to that point. Well, I was with Harvester Bikes at the time, and um, he had given me this small little camera to kind of film my own little edit. So I had already been kind of doing a lot of self-filming in the past, and lots of street, you know, like I, I like riding parks, but street is kind of like, I don't know how to describe it, it's just... You'll see kids ride at the park and they'll do the wildest stuff and they'll grind the biggest rails at the park And then you bring them out to a rail like this and you're like, hey, you just did that way bigger rail at the park Hit this up. They won't touch it with a 10-foot pole. So it's like it's almost like You get more street cred for it. It's just it's it feels more hardcore. It feels Just I don't know how to describe it. It's just more satisfying Doing real street footage that a lot of people won't touch because it's skate parks are meant for it. They're perfect in a sense, right? It, it's a perfect run up. It's a perfect run out street. You never know what you're getting. I guess I normally wouldn't go for something big like a handrail. Like this isn't a huge handrail. It's full size, like height, but it's not like it's a super long rail. That season particularly, I was really successful with a lot of other handrails I'd done. I'd done a few other kinkers, and um, I was just my confidence was up there so doing this rail like i just done i think two other rails that week so i really wasn't worried about anything big happening and like yeah i've taken some good hits i've hit my head a few times before but um that was just definitely really unexpected the way it went down so i, I really just wasn't worried at all about anything severe happening so it uh, happened in December of 2015 I can't really remember the exact day but it was mid-December it's really unique because you know we're in Canada so normally you're not riding outside in December but it, we had a really really mild beginning to the winter so we had absolutely no snow it was like 15 degrees Celsius weather I called a few people that night and uh, everyone was busy so it's just kind of like fuck it I'm just gonna go film this myself I got to the spot it started raining that should have been a red flag but um, I just thought man my run up is dry and it's a small rail so I don't think anything wild will happen and I don't even think the rain really contributed to my fall in the first place it was just the way the bike goes on that flap section of the kink trail I had a little uh, tripod with uh, adjustable legs and uh, I just wrapped it around the railing and and started filming so tell us about the first few attempts at this, because if I'm right, there is three different attempts. Yeah, so like you said, there's three attempts. So I was up under that uh, roof canopy part behind me, and uh, I set up my camera, I got it filming, I kind of did a couple test run-ups, and then I was like, all right, we're just going to send it. So I, I did the first one. Well, like I was telling you before, this part of the rail is just not long enough for both your pegs when you're going down to be like flat. So the the front peg would be coming down as the back peg is starting the flat section. That really messed me up. So I went over the bars on the first attempt and I uh, hit my shoulder and my knee pretty good and rolled out of it. And so the second one I was a little bit more careful. I tried my second attempt and I fell off again. It wasn't as hard of a hit. And then the third time is when the magic really happened and I took a nap in the rain. The, the clip itself is like a 20 minute long clip.
on the video, I think I'm unconscious for almost five minutes. Well, the first 30 seconds there, you just see my legs kind of doing the funky chicken there, and I kind of eventually just stop, and then I go flat, and some guy just, uh, he found me. He was like, walking in the neighborhood or maybe he drove past but uh, I guess he thought it was a little strange that there was a guy sleeping on the concrete in the rain beside a bicycle at this school which is St. Dominic's Savio Catholic School with this guy he uh, he finds you and what kind of happens after that so he finds me, and you see in the clip, he gets on his phone, and he's calling 911, and I'm just laying there, and um, he's just waiting for the cops to show up, and then uh, I guess I finally woke up after, you know, four and a half, five minutes, and I just started telling him to fuck off. That's like my initial instinct, you know, you're in shock, I just knocked myself out, and uh, I just kept telling him to fuck off, and fuck off, and I just, that's all I could say. I, I couldn't say anything else. I don't remember that though. Like literally, I just remember from hopping on the rail for the third time and waking up in the ambulance. I don't remember anything else in between. This is just going off by the footage that I have from the clip, which is kind of just still pretty incredible because no one else really has like long footage of themselves like falling and like it's, it's kind of cool to see what happened. It's not cool what happened, but it's cool to see what happened and, and to know exactly what happened without actually remembering it. He got me to sit down on a bench over here and so it's it's funny the the fire department was the first one to get here because he calls 911 so you know fire truck ambulance police car fire department's the first one here and uh, you can see in the clip I can just imagine what I did because again I don't remember this so the fire truck gets here these firefighters hop out and then you just see me get up and he's trying to hold me down and I'm just kind of like pushing him back and yeah so literally my jaw my face is hanging open blood everywhere and I guess I think it was just the the lights from the fire truck I see the flashing lights I'm like oh fuck I'm in trouble I shouldn't be here but I'm not really comprehending what happened so you see me the guys trying to keep me down and then I just grab my bike the fireman comes right up to me and I just put my head down and I go to walk right past him like I'm not involved here right and he just <laughs> they're like what the fuck <laughs> The ambulance shows up next after the fire department, and I guess, I, I wish I could have seen it on video of them stuffing a BMX bike into the back of an ambulance, but I guess the camera didn't catch that. The ambulance was kind of off to the side. I guess I just, I refused to leave the scene without my bike, so I guess they stuffed the bike inside the ambulance with me. So the cops show up last, and um, this first cop, I don't know, he must have thought I was mugged or something. So he kind of looks around, and... Then he gets out like some crime scene tape and it's just funny because in, in the clips too you can see he's, he's rolling out this crime scene tape and then he runs out of the roll and the tape kind of goes off in the wind. But then a second cop shows up and then within 30 seconds of him showing up he talks to the other cop, he kind of looks around, he looks over at the lights which are clearly not part of the school, they're my filming lights set up and he looks at the lights and then he comes up the stairs and it's cool because you see his badge you can kind of see his gun in a glimpse there and then he just comes up and he kind of does one of these and he looks and he sees the camera and then he grabs it and then that's also where you can see like where the dry spot from the rain where he grabs it and then he shuts it off it's funny in the clips um, there's there's a little uh, kind of loop of a street right behind us here so in the clips you see this guy, he pulls in, you can see which driveway pulls into, he gets out, he sees all the flashing lights and he kind of walks over and then walks back a bit and then he walks right up and you can see him kind of in front of the school just trying to figure out what's going on. You can't blame the guy, this is his neighborhood, he lives right here, he's like wondering why there's a bunch of cops and ambulance and fire truck in front of the school that's right across the street from his house. But it's just kind of neat, you see everyone in the clips kind of slow down as, as they see the cop cars and you know. People are just curious, what's the buzz? Anytime you see flashing lights and cops, you're always curious. And then um, back at the hospital, when the security came in to tell them that they had my bike, they gave me my camera back too. So I filmed a little 
in hospital clip too and uh, it's used in the beginning of my harvester edit where it's just like you know you see the hospital room it pans over and then it goes pans to myself with my big bloody face this sucks dick so it's it's kind of it's kind of neat having access to my camera at the different points that I did for this accident. But one big thing I just want to say to everyone is this is why just wear a helmet. When, when you're riding, like I didn't wear a helmet for 99% of my riding career. And, uh, you know, I'm really paying for it now. Because this, this was not the only time I've hit my head really bad. As uh, a lot of people who know me know that. So just wear a helmet, man. It's just, it's not, it's not worth it. You don't know when you're going to fall. You don't know what you're going to mess up on. And everyone's like, oh, I wear a helmet when I do big crazy things. And it's just like, for me and those people who know me and the rails have done this, wasn't a big crazy rail. Yeah, it's full size, but it's not like, it's not like it was anything wild. I've done lots of handrails, but it's, you just don't know when you're going to mess up. And usually it's on stuff you've done a thousand times. So just, I can't preach that enough. Just wear a fucking helmet. Your life's not worth it. It's just not. You don't know how you're going to hit your head. You could you could hit your head falling while standing up and you just hit it the right way and you're dead. Or you're a vegetable and you'll never really think on your own again. It's just not worth it. And if you guys are interested, Travis has a podcast with us. It's episode two of The Goat Cave where we kind of dive deep into some of the other accidents that he's had. But yeah, just don't don't do shit by yourself. Ride with your friends. It's more fun safer you know if anything happens you got that backup i'm lucky that this guy happened to be walking out here and and found me i kind of wish i could have found out who he was to say thank you but uh instead i just told him to fuck off <laughs> if you, if you want to see stuff i've done you can check it out in the fuck asses bmx dvd um i've got a harvester edit on youtube just type in travis stone harvester bikes and uh, also the Space Gold DVD. I have a couple clips in Flavor Country. That was, you know, a really old one. And um, yeah, if you want to check me out on Instagram, it's at T to the Stone. I can't really do much riding now because I've hit my head too many times. Uh, you know, uh, if I hit my head a certain way, even wearing a helmet, I could be a vegetable. So I pretty much had to uh, call her quits for the serious riding, though. I do like to cruise around once in a while and I, when I can. Would you say that uh, being such an avid street rider was kind of one of those things that made the helmet argument really debatable for you? Like you just did not want to wear one for years. Yeah, it was, it was one of those things. I, when I started riding more seriously, I was with a lot more kind of mid-school, old-school guys. And back in the days when I was really getting into it it was kind of like we'd watch some clips or or we'd, we'd see something and be like yeah that guy did that crazy thing but this guy did it without a helmet and it's just like whoa that's so much cooler but it's really not that was almost like the persona that I grew up in with BMX and it was definitely the wrong point of view because it's crazy whether you're doing it with or without a helmet if you're doing it without a helmet you're just pretty much risking your life like I literally almost died in 2018 because of my crash not wearing a helmet and you know even this crash I still would have hit my face with a helmet but it would have lessen the fall huge and uh it's just a point that i can't bring home enough like just you gotta wear a helmet it's just not worth it you don't know how you could fall or when you're gonna fall like if you knew when you're gonna fall you would know just not to go that time or not to do what you're gonna do but you never know that so if you love bmx and you love riding all i can just say is just be safe as you can. Wear a helmet. It's not a safe sport. We all know that getting into it, but it's it's something that you can you can just make it safer for yourself. It's easier to prevent it. Once it's already happened, there's not much you can do. I can't ride anymore because of my decisions not to wear a helmet. Don't let that be you. Hell yeah. I think that's a, a good spot to end it off.